There's uh, news out on the economy this morning, strong increase in consumer spending, 0.8, modest increase in in uh, uh, income, 0.2%. Oh, it's the American way. We spend money even though we don't have it. We're back. Well, that back, was pre-2008. Back, back to the Ameri- I, well, we, that was, did we, I wonder, does the mega like, million spend Evan, go into Evan, the consumer spending This is spending Neil's number? segment. Quiet for a minute. I'm let's sorry. give him. A, let's give him. A, let's give him a shot. Uh, uh, <clears throat> the economic numbers seem to be suggesting that uh, it wasn't just the weather that the economy is in reasonably good, reasonably good shape. Might be overstating it, but it's growing. Yeah, I mean, it's it's natural to have doubts about some of the improvements that we've seen, especially in the job market, when you have, you know, the fourth warmest U.S. winter. Uh, since records began in the 1850s and 1860s. Naturally, weather does help an economy grow. You know, factories don't have to close down because uh, there's there's not a big storm. Workers aren't staying at home. They're going to work. Maybe maybe some home builders are are breaking ground in places where that aren't frozen. So it's a natural doubt to have. And so several economists have raised questions about some of the the jobs figures we've gotten of late. Maybe a lot of the new jobs being added to the economy are related to weather and aren't here to stay, meaning we kind of have borrowed economic power uh, growth from um, you know the months to come and we're gonna see a dip now it's legitimate to a certain extent that could could account for some of the jobs but as we get into March as now that spring has sprung um, it, that, it looks that, we- less weather related it does yeah and I think there's increasing confidence among, among economists that um, the, the economy is a little bit sturdier than people Think we're continuing to see numbers of applications for jobless benefits, yeah. you know, adhere to the same downward trend. Next fr- uh, next Friday's employment report will be very important on this front, kind of confirming whether, you know, just how strong is this economy at this point. You buy this, Evan? You're, are you an optimist about well, the yeah, economy? Yeah, no, but I'm I'm in the slow grind camp. Meaning well, zero point two percent on yeah, personal income is a slow way, grind. For a co- I think I think things are getting things will continue to get better. But you have you know you have a kind of a, a, a growth economic cycle combined with the natural deleveraging that's going on in the economy, and those two forces are moving against each other. So you're you're not going to get more than three percent GDP growth as you would typically at this part of an economic cycle, simply because there are lots of people out there but, without but money. But slow grind is not a bad thing. I mean, slow grind is sort of what we're it's looking kinda, it's for. It's good for the stock point. market. You know, it's not good for traditional sectors like home builders who would typically yeah, sure. expect a big pop. I mean, that's it's sure, it's uneven, an uneven recovery. Right. right. Few, few people are. Um, I'm not saying that we should expect some kind of spectacular growth and that that's been hidden from view in some of the latest economic data and some of the worries about the weather. It is a unsatisfyingly slow, sluggish recovery. But it is a recovery. Yeah. And, and now, the surprise to date has been that employment has grown faster than the slow grind scenario would suggest. Right. As you say, uh, the upcoming numbers uh, next Friday will be an important indicator of that. But do people think that's going to continue, or do they think that's been a, a warm winter fluke? I think the general sense is that we're not going to get the kind of, you know, awesome numbers that we've been getting for the last couple of months. I think we've gotten 245,000 new jobs per month over the last three months. That's going to be tempered a little bit, potentially, in the months that come. Um, I think that, economists even, think, but... Even, Neil, even that 245, that's not, that's not a, that's not a block, those are not oh, blockbuster. That's a pretty good, that's no, a pretty no, good it's, number. It's good when for uh, quite a few months we were getting about 100,000, 120,000. Yeah. So right. it's, it's good on that front, but, you know, this is... If you just look at the curves, the pickup sure. in jobs has been very slow. Yeah, by but if you could keep measures. if you could keep two hundred and forty-five thousand up through the uh, through the rest of the year, you'd see substantial movement in the unemployment rate. I right. think the fear is you can't keep that kind of a number up uh, for the rest of the year. Yeah, definitely. Oh, there, there, are, there are some signs. And so, yeah, I mean, economists have been puzzled. Why are we getting? even that strong a number when things like income are so weak, when spending, despite today's number, in general, hasn't been as you know, uh, vigorous as people wanted. Um, it's possible that some of the data aren't, aren't showing us um, the full picture and that the jobs market is kind of showing us where things really stand. One thing that came out yesterday was actually some data on GDP for, for the fourth quarter. Interestingly, most people pay attention to GDP. That's what people know. There's another figure called GDI, gross domestic income, which kind of tabulates all the income that the that the economy generates as opposed to goods and services produced. That, for the fourth quarter of last year, was a lot faster than what GDP suggested. It's kind of one little data point that suggests that maybe the economy is in better shape than we think. All right, Neil Shaw, thanks a lot. Good story this morning. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, thank you for being with us.